Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. In this short video, we'll be going over how you can get set up with render streaming. Honestly, there's so much more you can dive into with render streaming, which I'd love to know if there's any specific area that you would like to see down in the comments below. In this video, I just wanna keep it to the very high level of how you can get set up, and then from there, you can, we can kind of dive into whatever those specific needs are. Starting with the overview here, as I mentioned before, this is based on WebRTC, as mentioned in the previous video, and high-level diagram, you have a web server that can be deployed locally, or it can be deployed somewhere on the cloud. Both your web browser and your Unity client, device, whatever, is going to be connecting to that web server. They will signal what data they want to communicate, and then once they do that, they can send that over to each other peer to peer. You also have the option of setting up a proxy server and then that could be sitting even with your web server and that data can go between the web server and between Unity as well. Switching over to Unity here, I've gone ahead and done all the download and installation steps to save time, but really basically what you only want to do is go ahead and find the Unity render streaming package in your package manager it is marked as preview here, so it might not show up unless you should do the show preview package. So make sure you go ahead and install that. And then additionally, you'll want to go ahead and import in these examples. Once you have that installed, you can then actually go ahead, head over to edit, and then go to render streaming, and then download the web app to test things locally. I've actually gone ahead and set up a specific server for myself based on this web app, just so that you don't even have to run it locally. You can actually at least connect to that instance of that web server. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how I did that, I basically turned it into a Dockerized web server that you could deploy on the cloud, you could deploy it on the edge, and it's really succinct in how easy it is to get deployed anywhere. If you're interested in seeing that, I let me know. I'm, I'm happy to dedicate a video to just kind of how you can take an application like a web server and how you can dockerize it. Because I think there's a lot of interesting things you could do there. But anyway, I've gone ahead and set that up. And if we connect over to that instance, which I've gone ahead and deployed over on Mobile Edge X, if you're curious about that, feel free to also leave a comment below and I'm happy to chat in more detail about what is Mobile Edge X. But anyway, that's been deployed here. We'll head over to the video player sample, which is a just an HTML page that has been open sourced and that open source is actually available here by Unity Technologies. And I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Go ahead, open up the video player sample. And then in your examples, head over to the web browser input scene, which I've gone ahead and already opened up. Now this scene here is just the Unity version of our client. So if we head back over to our diagram here, the web browser here is the website, and then the Unity side is of course the Unity side. Here, if we head over to your render streaming game object, this is the game object that basically acts as the manager for how to send that data to the web server and communicate with it. As a result, you need to go ahead and put in the address for that web server. So let me go ahead and do that right now. Now you can communicate over a few different signaling paths. So in this case, we're gonna be using WebSockets. You do have HTTP and there's also Furious, which is basically a rendering hosting service that is provided by Unity that Unity ended up purchasing. But in our case, since we have the server, we can just go ahead and set up a WebSocket instance and the rest you can customize as needed. There's a lot in this specific project and I won't be going into too many details, but at a high level, it gives you the options of where you are broadcasting from and how you are sending and receiving data. So you can see here, we're streaming out two cameras. So the camera for camera one, which will be actually able to control, the, will be getting the input from the web browser so that we can act on it. And then there's a secondary camera that will be sent streaming out as well. So with that explained, we can actually go ahead and click play and that will start the streaming process to connect to our web server. And similarly, if we head back into a web browser and then we go ahead and click on play here, we'll now get our stream coming from Unity 
uh, and actually going directly peer to peer. I should, I should clarify that. Uh, they communicated initially, if we had, again, back to the diagram, initial communication happens at that web server. Once that is resolved, it'll talk to the stun server. The stun server will make it so that if there's any private networks, it will be able to still talk with each other. And then everything happens from there peer to peer. Putting these together just side by side here, if I go ahead and press WASD, and I'm making sure I have selected the web browser. You can actually see that Unity is disabled. So my key inputs are going directly to the browser that then gets streamed over to Unity here. And similarly, if I go ahead and click light off, light on, you can see that that is going and turning things off. Now, let me actually also go ahead and grab my phone. Now, what's really interesting is if you have multiple devices that are all kind of connecting together over WebRTC, so you can see here that I am connected to the same instance that we were just communicating over the web server. So now on the phone, if I go ahead and just kind of touch around here, you can also see that the secondary camera is kind of rotating and moving around exactly based on that rotation. I also have that ability to control the lights off, lights on, which is happening again. You can see my hands uh, based on that mobile device. And so it's kind of really powerful in the sense that you can have also multiple devices that are all getting that stream, again, from Unity, passed onto various different browsers, various different devices, and controllable from all these different devices. The other thing that I should also mention here is that everything happens real time and to kind of prove the fact that this is not being rendered locally, but it's rather on a stream, we can actually go ahead and let's say we want to place a cube. You can see pretty much instantaneously that that cube gets added to our scene here. Similarly, again, we can add a cylinder and boom, that all gets happened in real time. Of course, because this is the editor, I, I kind of have free ring control here. And the second I stop playing the scene, all of this goes away. But the point being that this is not actually happening, running natively on the device here. It's a, it's a video stream that's getting piped through. And that I think is really, really awesome to see. Uh, you can see the input going back and forth. You can see the streams kind of going back and forth. And at that point, Unity, you can do whatever you want, really make this as high poly as you want, run this on a virtual machine with a high-end GPU and pass that data to even a mobile device. There, they actually have samples that are available for using AR Core, AR Kit, so that you can send the mobile gyro device and positional data and map that onto a camera. There's a lot of really powerful things that you can just do in the context of streaming. So I just wanted to quickly walk through how you can get this render streaming set up. It's not terribly complicated. It's just pretty much install and get that web server set up and get your uh, applications connected over WebRTC and you're good to go. The Unity application is fairly transparent in how you can uh, customize it. If there's interest in a video diving into the web client and how you can customize that as well, happy to dive into that into a future video, but definitely curious to know down in the comments below. That'll do it for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.